Oh, hi there, and welcome back to Minecraft. In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about the Emits tool, or Advanced Minecraft Interface and Data Structure Tracking, to give it its full name. You can see why they abbreviated that. Anyway, what is Emits, I hear you ask? And quite simply, Emits is a tool that enables you to see a map of any Minecraft world. You can use it to find biomes, strongholds, villages, witch huts, shipwrecks, ocean monuments, ocean ruins, buried treasure, slime chunks, mine shafts, woodland mansions, pillager outposts, nether fortresses, end cities, and pretty much anything else you can think of. As you can tell, we have a lot to cover in this video, and some of you may already know parts of what we're going to cover, so for that reason, I'm going to put timestamps on the screen, so you can jump ahead to the relevant parts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually download the tool. And to do that, you need to come over to this website. So you've got github.com slash toolbox for Minecraft slash emits slash releases. Uh, the link for that will be in the description of the video. So feel free to click that if you need it. And you want to come down here to here. Now, this is the latest version at the time of recording this video. There may be a later version by the time you watch it. Uh, but if it is, then it will obviously be higher. Uh, so we're going to go to emits for v 4 4exe Click on that. And we can see that this is downloaded in the bottom left corner. Click on that piece of cake. Uh, you will need Java. So if you've got Java, you'll need to get Java. And then you'll get this. Now, this box allows you to choose the Minecraft profile that you want to use to find the seed from. Uh, so I'm going to use the latest version, which in this instance is 1.15.2. Um, your list will show whatever versions you currently have downloaded on your computer. I don't have many, so let's click on that and it will load up. We have uh, a few different options on here. Let me just enlarge that for the full screen. If you go to file, we've got... Uh, there's three things to start. You can new from seed, new from random seed, or open save game. We'll go through each of these individually and we'll start from the seed. So if we click on that, it then asks you for a seed. And as I'm sure you're all aware, to get the seed, you'll just need to type slash seed and hit enter. And then you just need to click in here, paste the seed, and then click OK. It will come up with this new box, which gives you a few different options, and it depends on the world type you want or you are currently playing in. So the default is just the normal world. Uh, flat is obviously a flat world. Large biomes as large biomes or amplified as amplified. So if we just stick with the default, obviously you can pick whatever you want and then click OK. That will then load up the seed map. Here we go. Give it a second. You can see down here you've got the, the radius of 500 blocks and it's slowly loading in. The, obviously, if you zoom in, it will load in a little bit quicker. Uh, so let's just do that. Uh, that is essentially your seed map. You can zoom out and you've got a lot more. So that's to get from a seed. And the reason you might want to use this way is if you're looking for a specific biome or structure in the world that you're currently playing in and it just saves you time searching, walking around the land. So you can do it this way and get that. Now, other options, you can obviously file new from random seed. So what that basically does is just pick a random seed. And obviously you get the same options here. So we could say, for example, large biomes just for, you know, why not? Uh, click on that. And this obviously then generates a new one. So this is a completely random world. And you might use this because you're looking at starting a new world, but you want something with a nice... Uh, sort of landscape that you're looking for, maybe certain biomes, etc. So this instance might be a good idea to actually just check all different seeds and you can just keep going through random ones until you find what you're looking for let's just go default there for you and so there's a whole new seed and the seed is written up here as well and of course the final way to load up a seed map is to go to open a save game so what that does is looks in your saves folders and i've actually created one here called amidst and we'll open that so that's the world we're currently playing in so you've got single player multiplayer or both um it doesn't really make a difference i'm playing single player so i'm going to open single player uh, so that is the world that I'm currently in speaking to you from right now. And the reason you might want to open a world this way is because of this little fella here. Now that's actually me. I'm in the world and I can see exactly where I am. So this is world spawn right here. And this is me at world spawn. So say you, if you're looking for that particular item and or that structure that you want to find and you don't know where it is, this can help you because you, you, you've got a good reference to where you are. So I know that I'm there. And for example, this is an igloo is just over here. And I've got up here the coordinates of it, minus 168, minus 216. Uh, so, I mean, why don't we just go to it? So to show you how this works, I've actually opened up both screens next to each other so you can see them both at the same time. If I press F3, I can see my coordinates. I'm at 133 and minus 249, which means to get to what minus 168 and 216, I've got to head off in this sort of direction. So it is a bit of a walk. So let me just do it. And obviously, I, well, I could teleport, but I think, well, let's fly. Let's fly there. That looks like that could be the one. So it's not exactly spot on, 
But do you know what? It's pretty close. So that's what? Minus one, oh, 168 and 216 is this way. So it was out by about two blocks. But I think that's pretty good. So that's how you find stuff in it. And obviously you can teleport there, you can walk there, you can do what you want. Uh, but there we go. There's the igloo that just happened to be there. Now you'll notice on my other screen that I actually haven't moved. And that's because as much as this is real time, uh, it does need refreshing. So if we click, click on world, uh, you can see down here, reload play location, just hit F5. So if I just do that, you can see that I've now moved and I'm exactly where I want to be. So what you need to do is press F5 and you'll see the updated place of the player and obviously if there's multiple players if you've got multiplayer then you're going to see every player so you want to find a specific biome in the seed uh, that's easy enough to do if you look at the top right hand corner up here we've got uh, well it's forest and then it's got coordinates 605 minus 528 so what that's basically doing is telling me where my cursor is currently at so if i move my cursor down here we can see now we're in planes we, the coordinates have changed we've got tiger hills we've got uh, cold tiger hills cold tiger, ice plains, etc, etc. It basically tells you what is where your cursor is. So it's a nice way of finding biomes nice and easy. Now, after a while, you will actually recognize the colors of the biomes, so you won't need to actually hover over it. You'll just know what they are because white is ice plains, for example. Um, but you can zoom out. Now, if we look here, we've got this indicates how large the area is that we're looking at. So we've got 200 blocks in that area. We can zoom out all the way to 2,000 blocks, just to give you an idea of how big that map can be. Um, but that's going to take forever. So let's just zoom back in a second. Uh, 500 blocks a piece. Uh, so this up here, we've got some desert. We've got uh, desert hills. We've got... Um, there's a swamp land up here. There's mesa up here by the looks of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can see what you want and it doesn't matter what you're looking for. You can just navigate around the map until you find it. And as I say, once you know that you want, for example, extreme hills, well, there's the coordinates. You can head over there straight away. So the next thing you might want to do is find a specific structure. So if we start with the overworld, uh, you probably have already spotted this already by just watching this video but there's lots of different icons on here and these icons indicate different structures so i mean if we zoom in a little bit um we got here this guy if we just click on it on the top left it tells you what it is so you've got a village and it tells you the coordinates there you go uh, but we've got all sorts of stuff so in this tiny little one here an ocean ruin we can zoom in and then obviously you can see it there's a shipwreck there there's what else have we got um there's a buried treasure here um yeah lots and lots of things whatever you might want to find that's a witch hut um all sorts of stuff it also shows things like this the uh villager outpost or the ocean monument so you got all sorts of stuff um as standard not everything is showed on the map just because there'd be a lot so up here you can go to layers and there's actually ways you can amplify this and just improve it so there's actually a grid as well that's very useful because it just gives you an idea of sort of coordinates without actually looking at the coordinates you can just get a rough idea um but yeah up here we've got a few things so we can add things like the mine shafts now all those mine shafts about there's loads uh, so obviously that's one that's one that's one that's one uh, so that's one of the things that you can also add uh, slime chunks which is very useful obviously for making slime farms so if we click that that's just going to make everything go crazy and this is the reason these aren't on as standard because otherwise if you zoom out a bit you're just not going to it means nothing. There's just so much. It just it's impractical to look at that. But say you wanted to find a nice um, couple of slime chunks so you can make a decent farm. I mean, we can see here there's obviously three there together. There's four there together. You can find what sort of formation you're looking for. I mean, there's a slime chunk in a mine shaft, so you might you might find a use for that. Who knows? Let's just turn some of these layers off just so we don't get overwhelmed with everything. Uh, uh, so that's that. Now. The next thing you can do is you can look at the uh, nether fortresses or the nether items. So you click here, the nether fortress icons, and what this actually does is it shows you them on the overworld. So if we zoom out a bit, there'll be some somewhere. Um, oh, there's one. So if we zoom back over here, you can click on that, and it basically tells you the nether fortress, and it tells you where in the nether it is. So in the overworld, you're going to be on these coordinates. In the nether, they're going to be on those coordinates. So that's very useful for finding like nether fortresses and obviously see where where things are in comparison to where you are. Now, we can actually go back to spawn and see where the closest nether fortress is from spawn. Um, if we zoom out a bit, looking very carefully. Um, oh, quite a long way away. Okay, looks like that might be the one. That one, or possibly that one. There's a couple. But yeah, so if you wanted to go to another fortress, you'd know that you've got to go to that location in the overworld, or obviously it's much quicker to travel in the nether. 
And if you're looking for a stronghold, there's a few ways you can do this. Now, first of all, there is an icon just like for everything else, uh, which actually is just here, which is lucky. Stronghold looks like bricks. But uh, strongholds, as you're well aware, are few and far between, and sometimes they're, I mean, it might be hard to spot it. So what you can actually do is click on world, and then you can go to go to stronghold. There is uh, control, shift, and H if you want to do that. Uh, but click on that, and it gives you a list of all the different coordinates, coordinates. So you can just click whichever one you want. It will start with the closest ones to sort of the player, the spawn. Um, but you can just pick, say, that one, and just click OK, and it will take you straight there. You've got the stronghold, and you know where it is. And then, of course, it goes without saying that once you find the stronghold, you need to go to the end. So we can do that by clicking on layers. We can come down here to click on end. And that basically changes the map. Let's just zoom in a little bit for... Well, actually, we might want to go to uh, spawn. So that's the spawn, and that's obviously where we are. Uh, so this is the main end island and then obviously we've got the outer islands over there uh, you can obviously use the same thing here so end city icons and then it shows you where the cities are so for example there's one here likely end city and possible end city they don't seem too confident with these I mean I'm it might be worth taking that with a pinch of salt but if you if, if you're looking for an end city that's a better bet than say that for example but yeah so that's um that's all the possible end cities in the end all ready for you to go and I mean I yeah there's a lot there but anyway that's all we got time for today so if you enjoyed this video if you found it useful and you've learned something please give it a big like and a thumbs up if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel and obviously tell your friends about it too because if you like it there's a good chance they will too but as always I've been Skeet Gamer you've been awesome and thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>